Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Dalton Roma F4LR, the latest member of the newly introduced micro long range 4 inch quadcopters family. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and finally head outdoors and test it out. In addition I've already performed an endurance test using a 4S lithium ion 3100mAh battery pack and if you'd like you can check it out in this link over here. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter you can find a single set of HQ Prop 4 inch biobladed propellers, molded plastic accessories for mounting an action camera on the top plate, the assembly diagram of the frame which by the way is available separately, a bag with M2 screws for securing the propellers, three high quality battery velcro straps in different sizes, two cards with the pinout and specs of the Mamba F05 DJI mini flight controller, and the F30 mini 4-in-1 ESC, a code that shows you how to connect the radio receiver along with an RXSR JST adapter, two plastic antenna tubes and a couple of zip ties, spare screws for the frame, a bag with a buzzer and a JST connector that you will need to solder to the flight controller in case you would like to use it, and two transparent plastic plates with 20x20 20 20 and 25.5x25.5mm mounting holes. In terms of specs, the Dalton Roma F4LR features 1404 3000 kV motors, which are pushing 4 inch bioblended propellers and secured to the frame using three M2 screws. On the bottom of its 20x20mm stack, you can find a 30A BLLES 4 in 1 ESC, which came pre flashed with Jazz Maverick 16.8 firmware, and on top of it, an F4 flight controller that features four full UART ports and a 9 volts PC. In addition, a layer of protection is placed between the 4 in 1 ESC and the flight controller, which is a nice add on. A 25 volts 330 microfarad capacitor is pre soldered to the battery pads. The battery is going to be mounted on the top plate, and it is using an XT30 battery connector, which I recommend to secure to the standoff using a zip tie, in order to prevent the battery leads from being accidentally cut by the propellers. On the back of the frame, mounted inside a 3D printed TPU mount which can also accommodate an Immortal T antenna, you can find a BN180 GPS unit and next to it a 10cm long LHCP antenna. Now since this is the HD version, on the back of the frame, mounted to the bottom plate, you can find the Cadex Vista digital transmission system and on the front, well protected by the aluminum side plates, the Cadex Nebula Micro camera unit. In case you would like to improve your FPV experience in the cost of adding a couple of extra grams, you can get a version that doesn't come with the DJI system and install your own Vista kit that comes with the DJI camera and on top of that, an analog version is available as well. In addition, all the versions are available with or without an FRSky D16 compatible receiver and the plug and play version, which is also a bundle fly version in case you are using the DJI radio controller, comes with this plug pre-soldered to the flight controller which will enable you to easily connect an Afrosky RXSR receiver without doing any soldering work. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 176mm and it features a dead cat pattern, so the propellers are going to be out of your FPV feed. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 3mm and its width is 6.7mm. The thickness of the bottom, middle and top plates is 1.5mm. The distance between the middle and top plates is 18.6mm. On the front of the bottom plate you can find both 20x20 and 25.5x25.5mm whoop style mounting holes and on the back of the plate you can find 20x20mm mounting holes. The weight of the Dayton Roma F4LR without a battery is 161.9 grams, so it's lighter than the iFlight Shimmer 4 but still a little bit heavier than the Flyaway Explorer and the Gepper C Crocodile Baby, which both feature a full-sized DJI camera and a self-powered buzzer. In case you would like to install a radio receiver, disassemble the top plate using a 1.5mm hex key, solder the radio receiver to the UART1 pads on the flight controller or use the pre-soldered connector. In case you have the HD version, disconnect the yellow signal wire from the JST connector. Bind the radio receiver with your radio controller, configure it accordingly on Betaflight, and make sure that it is working properly. Now in case you need to add your own Cadex Vista system, here is a diagram that shows you how to do it. As for the other Betaflight settings, they are pretty standard. However, you should note that the GPS is only wired to the flight controller, but not configured at all, and in order to set it up, you will need to head over to the port section, 
Under Sensor Inputs next to Yacht 5, select GPS, save and reboot the flight controller, head over to the configuration tab, under GPS, enable the GPS switch, set the protocol to U-Blocks, and save and reboot the flight controller. Then you need to enable expert mode in order to enter the GPS configuration, and then over here you can set up the felsef mode. I have a separate video that shows you how to configure the GPS rescue feature in Betaflight, so if you'd like, you can check it in this link over here. Now in case you have the HD version, activate the Cadex Vista and update it to the latest available version. Configure your favorite flight modes and OSD elements and you'll be good to go. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Dayton Roma F4LR using different types of forest batteries. In case you need to stay under 250 grams, your best option would be a 650 mAh forest battery. If you'd like to achieve extra long flight times of about 26 minutes, you should use a forest lithium ion battery pack. And if you'd like to get extra performance, I recommend to go with this new GNB 1100 mAh forest LSB battery, which is actually surprisingly lighter than this 850 mAh forest battery. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 6 to 8 minutes using a 650 mAh forest battery and about 10 minutes with the 1100 mAh forest LHV battery without a GoPro camera and about 6 to 7 minutes including one and of course it depends on how you fly and push the throttle. You should note however that the stock tune of this quadcopter is not great and I recommend to lower the PND using the sliders on beta flight in order to achieve a smoother flight. In addition, the quality of the carbon fiber parts and the electronics, except the GPS unit, which took forever to get a GPS lock, is great. The motor wires are nicely soldered to the 4-in-1 ESC, and it's excellent that the flight controller features four full UART ports and a 9V BEC to power the Cadex Vista. You should note, however, that as I mentioned before, the Roma F4LR doesn't come with a self-powered buzzer, so in case you're going to use it for long-range flights, I highly recommend to add one. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and by the way, now since I have all the major 4-inch long-range quadcopters, I'm going to spend more time with them and post a comparison video in the next couple of weeks. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos! And goodbye.